We are going to look at a special case of a linear programming problem in standard form. So again, a problem is minimize C transpose x subject to ax equal to bx greater than or equal to zero. But here we are going to have the matrix A to have the following property. That if you look at each column, it has to have exactly one one, one minus one, and everything else zero. Such a matrix is usually called a no R incidence matrix. And the reason is because we can represent such a matrix with a direct graph. A direct graph is an object consisting of nodes and arcs. And we'll look at an example, just to illustrate the concept. So suppose that my matrix A is the following. So what we do is, uh, for each row, I'm going to label them V1 up to V4. And each column, I'm going to label E1 up to E4. Or let me add one more column, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw four circles. So the last column is E5. Uh, each one is one of these Vs. Okay, so V1, V2, V3, and V4. Now I look at each column. And for each column, I'm going to draw an arrow. And the arrow is going to start from the node that has entry 1 and ends at the node that has entry minus 1. So for example, if I look at column E1, I will have an arrow that leaves V1 and enters V2, and I'm going to label that E1. I'm going to do the same thing for E2. So E2 leaves V4 and enters V3. This is E2. And E3 is going to leave V2 and enters V3. And E4 is going to leave V4 and enter V1. So this is E4, E3. And finally, E5 is going to leave V4 and enter V2. OK? And you can see I have nodes and I have arcs. Now, if I give you this picture, you can write down this matrix A, no problem, right? Because for every picture like this, say I give you this picture, say V1 is here, V2, V3, and I'm going to give you this picture. All right, so I have E1, E2, E3. Then the matrix that correspond to this will be what? So E1 leaves V1 enters V2. The first column will be 1 minus 1, 0. And this will be 0, 1 minus 1. And this will be minus 1, 0, 1. OK? Why are we interested in this form of linear programming problem? The reason is very simple. And one of the nice property is that if, if B is integral, that means every entry in B is an integer. Then every extreme point of the set P defined by x such that ax equal to B, x greater than or equal to 0 is integral as well. So again, if every entry in B is an integer, then if you look at any extreme point of the feasible region, every entry is integer as well. This allows us to solve a very special case of integer programming problem. We're going to look at a proof of this result in a separate video, and we'll look at some examples as well, so stay tuned.